Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are joining us for worship this morning. And we extend a warm welcome to our friends here in Conway, to those of you who may be joining us across the nation or even around the world. Thank you for joining us as we worship God this day. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Follow us on Facebook at First United Methodist Church Conway, South Carolina, for the latest updates and happenings. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for other live programs and worship services at First United Methodist Church, Conway, South Carolina. As we gather for worship this day, we invite you to fully join us. Follow the service using our leaflet PDF. Find the leaflet PDF on our website at www.fumcconway.org or in the video link description below. As the generous people of First United Methodist Church, we live in a covenant with one another to help support the mission and the ministries of building up the body of Christ and fulfilling the kingdom of God. We thank you for your generosity and helping us fulfill our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We offer three easy ways that you can help us in supporting our goal to be the body of Christ. In this time of uncertainty, know that we are praying for one another, for our community, our nation, and our world. Please keep us in your prayers as well. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son, the Christ, to walk among with us, and you empowered the Holy Spirit to be the life and the light within your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you whenever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We invite you to be seated. And as you're being seated, I'll continue with a couple of the final announcements. Again, next Sunday, we celebrate the blessing of the backpacks in the beginning of the school year as we recognize students and teachers and other school personnel. We hope that you will come and join us on that day and have some ice cream after worship and the little ones get to bounce and jump in the bounce house. Next Sunday will also be the day that we welcome the Reverend Emily Kirby to our staff and our family here at First United Methodist Church. It'll be an opportunity that day for you to come and meet Emily and her family, Adam and their son, Judah, as they begin ministry with us next week. So help us to provide a warm and gracious First United Methodist welcome to Emily and her family and to join us as we help to kick off the beginning of a new year with blessings for students and teachers. We remind you that the golf tournament is coming up in a couple weeks. And if you haven't had an opportunity, there's information in the Narthex and by the elevator with forms for those who are golfers or if you would like to sponsor one of the holes during the, throughout the at the champion, excuse me, if you would like to sponsor one of the holes on the course while we play. It'll be a great day of fun and fellowship and an opportunity for us to help support youth and children's ministries here. And tomorrow our youth will be going to Carowinds and we ask that you hold the youth and the adults who are going with them. There's a caravan of 42 of us, at least, I think, who will be heading to Carowinds early in the morning tomorrow. So we ask your prayers and blessings upon us as we travel tomorrow along the roads and to have fun and celebrate. We invite you to look over the other announcements. We remind you that if you are bringing a backpack for help for kids, we had said the deadline is tomorrow, but if you can get them here to us during this week, we will ensure that they get to help for kids to help the students and teach students here in Horry County to start the new year off well. Again, we welcome you this day and we join in celebrating with you and your presence here as we worship. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, (laughs) kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more, bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation, I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. 
If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the, world of, by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many of the stars of heaven as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted him. Then they confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, Jesus said to his disciples, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit, like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may, be open, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. For truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat. And he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming he would not have let his house be broken in two. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. As you are seated, we invite the children to come to the front. Good morning. How are you today? You're good? All right, we got some more friends who are coming over here. All right. Hmm, let's see. How many of you are going to start school in a few days, in a few, or next week? Okay. Neely Pate has already started. That's right. All right. Some of you have a little bit longer before school starts. That's right. But there's still some more fun to be had this summer. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. So this morning we kind of hear about some people in Isaiah. Isaiah was one of the books in the Old Testament. And, and sometimes they did not always listen to what God wanted them to do. Now, I know that you probably always listen to everything your mom and dad tells you to do and your teachers, and you never do anything otherwise, right? Exactly, Ro. I know you always listen. That's exactly right. All right. So, but we're going to kind of play a game today, okay? Do you have a thumb? All right. All right, we're going to play thumbs up or thumbs down, okay? All right. So, if you think that it's the right thing to do, I need you to hold your thumb up. And if you think it's the wrong thing to do, you hold your thumbs down, okay? All right. Let's, let's see how we do this. All right. Um, if you see somebody who has fallen down, a friend who's fallen down and maybe skint their knee... Should you help them stand up and help them? Okay. All right. Now, if it wasn't a friend, it was just some sh new kid that you didn't know his name or her name on the playground, should you still help them? Okay. All right. Um, 
it's your birthday and you have all your friends over and you got your favorite new toy that you have been wanting, but your friends want to play with it before you, should you let them play with it? Yes. Okay, but now are you really going to let them play with it or do you sometimes want to take it first and play with it? No, okay, okay, just checking, all right. So your mom or your dad says, I need you to help me, but you're outside playing and you really don't wanna come in and help set the table for supper. Do you come on in and help set it or do you keep playing and say, I'll be there in a minute? What do you think, thumbs up you help them or thumbs down you say, wait a minute, I'll be there soon. Ah, uh, <laughs> I think that's a thumbs down. <laughs> ah, it's a both, okay, okay. As it begins, pins, all right. Well, so you see, sometimes God, we're supposed to be good followers of Jesus and, help, and do the things that, that God would want us to do to help, to help people and to be kind. But sometimes, have you ever got mad at somebody? Mm. And, and you, when you got mad at somebody, did you ever maybe say or do something that you shouldn't have? Mm. Ty says no. You thinking about it? Maybe, maybe. You don't, you don't think so? Okay. Well, I, I hope you haven't, because you see, um, I mean, if there was only one cone of ice cream left, would you share it with somebody or would you like prefer to keep it to yourself? You would share it? Oh good, I'm gonna stick around with you guys next Sunday in case we run out of ice cream. I know who I'm gonna get ice cream from. <laughs> yeah, oh wait, wait, wait a minute, are you changing your mind on me? No. Uh, okay, all right, so I'm gonna look. If they run out, I'm coming to you to get my ice cream, okay? I, I, I see that there's, there's about seven friends up here who will have ice, an extra cone of ice. I'll get seven cones of ice cream next Sunday. You well, you're all going to give me your ice cream. Oh, no. You just said you would do that. No, oh, Peyton says no about that. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I want us to remember that sometimes that it's, sometimes it's hard to make the right decisions, but we have to do our very best to do the things that we think God would want us to do. And that's what Isaiah was trying to help the people, the Israelites understand that they, to do good, God says you should do good and help other people. So we're gonna try that, especially as a new school year starts very soon, or if you're already in school or taking part with other activities that you remember to be good friends. Can you all be good friends? Yeah, I think you can. All right, let us pray. Dear God, Thank you for loving us. Help us to do good, to be kind and helpful and to share. Amen. I think Miss Julia is waiting to go to Children's Church if you would like to join her in Children's Church today, all right? Or you can go back to your seat, okay? You gonna go with Miss Julia, Mr. Ty? Okay, all right. I'm gonna squeeze through you. Sorry, Charlotte. <laughs> Most gracious, holy, and loving God, as we come before you on this day, we pause and give you thanks for the gracious opportunity to surround ourselves with fellow followers in the body of Christ. And we pray that as we hear your word and receive your forgiveness and are nourished on your, in your body and blood, that you would equip us to do good, to share your word, to be the body of Christ, not just here in this place, but to be the body of Christ in every place. Amen. By faith, by faith, by faith, the words seem to repeat themselves 
over and over this morning in the reading from Hebrews. It's kind of like the sound of your heart. It just kind of keeps going lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. If you were listening to it with a stethoscope, it just keeps going and going that same rhythm over and over and over and over. But in the letter to the Hebrews, we hear these words echoed by, by the faith of our ancestors Abraham that they had received. By faith, we understand. By faith, Abraham obeyed. By faith, he stayed. By faith, he received. And if you read on even the verses that are in between where we did not read today, you would continue to hear that by faith, by faith, by faith. It's as if it's that same rhythm of your heart that just keeps beating, lub dub, lub dub, that keeps you alive, that just keeps going on and on and on. We're not exactly sure of the exact author of the book of Hebrews, but what we can discern from his, the writing of the letter is that it's being written to a group of people who may be about to give up, who are frustrated perhaps with the church, who are struggling in their faith. It's written to people who've made sacrifices, who've endured suffering, but who are growing weary. And sometimes it's hard enough to endure throughout the short term to make it all the way through and they're not sure that they're in it for the long haul. They can see what's right in front of them. And they don't really like it. And so they're not really sure that they want to stick around past that. And, and, and so you might say that the letter to the Hebrews is a sermon written to, by a preacher to a group of people who are about to walk out the door of the church and never look back. But his message is don't give up. You got to have faith. You got to trust in Jesus that Christ is the one for in, in whom we hope. That Jesus is the one above all that we trust. That he is the one in whom we place our faith because he is faithful to us. That you may not have seen the future, but it is Jesus who holds the future for you. So have faith because Jesus is the faithful one. And so the writer echoes the words that by faith, by faith, by faith, as if it's the sound of the rhythm of your heart beat that just keeps going. Beat after beat after beat after beat. That it's not as if this is some exercise that you've got to go in and show what you can do. It's that you just keep hearing the beat that keeps going. You see, it's, it is about a commitment that you and I must make that we have to show up that we have to keep trying and it matters that we keep trying even if our efforts seem as small as that as a tiny seed of a mustard seed but faith is not an accomplishment faith is not a reward that we receive by our endurance as to how many push-ups that we can do or how many times we show up in church or how often we read the Bible or how many prayers we say. Faith is not something that's done by our own efforts, even though we might grit our teeth. But faith is receiving that life-giving, empowering grace of Jesus Christ because it's Jesus' faith and his faithfulness to us that matters the most. Because you see, in baptism, you and I become connected to Jesus in that faith. In baptism, you and I die and rise in that faith and are united together. 
and a resurrection like his. And that faith doesn't always come easy. Sometimes it requires great exertion on our part. But nonetheless, we all receive that faith through Jesus who is faithful to us. Now this summer, I've spent a little bit of time flying on airplanes. And I enjoy flying on airplanes. I don't really, th they're not something that makes me nervous or worry. But there are people I know who do not enjoy flying on airplanes. I remember a story of a former parishioner and she hated flying on airplanes, even though she got on them many times to see her children who lived across the United States. But the best story I remember telling is that when she, or her husband telling me is that when she and her husband were going on their honeymoon and they got on the airplane and they were flying and they were flying and the, all of a sudden the pilot told them that they were dropping and he had, there was some turbulence and they had to drop down in some altitude. And she said, all of a sudden you could feel that there was a change in the plane. And she looked over at her husband and she said, are we still alive? <laughs> she, she said that she was always the nervous passenger on the plane. But you see, whether you enjoy flying or whether you hate flying or you're somewhere in between, all you have to do is to show up and get on the plane. That is your sole responsibility. Because you are not flying the plane. That is the job of the pilot. Whether you are undaunted by the turbulence, or whether you hunker down and eat that last bit of pretzel like it is your last meal that you are about to receive before you meet your Lord and Savior, Jesus. All that really matters is the experience and the training of the pilot. The pilot is the same for those of us who are calm and relaxed and sit back as he is or she is for those of us who are on the edge of your seat praying and biting your nails and counting down the moment until that plane touches the ground again. The pilot is the same for every passenger. All you and I have to do is to show up and get on the plane. Jesus Christ is the same for every single one of us. His love and his grace and his forgiveness is constant for each one of us. His faithfulness to us never wavers. And so the writer this morning in Hebrew reminds us of the encourages us what it means to stick together as a community of followers of Jesus Christ, to stick with Jesus, to trust that by living with willing hearts and open hearts, hearts that we have a future that awaits us a destination that we will get to a destination that has been prepared so that we become the inheritors of a future that is far better than we could ever ask for or imagine because you see it's Jesus's faith that makes the difference and our faith in Jesus, our confidence in Jesus lets us do things that you and I would never otherwise imagine. Our confidence in Jesus allows us to step onto the airplane. Because you see what Jesus did for us and what Jesus does for us and our sometimes tiny mustard seed of faith connects us to him. And it means that we have hope, that we have joy, that we can serve, that we can give, that we can see if, that we know that there's a future that awaits for us. And even though you and I can't see it, Jesus holds that future. So you see, it's not about the short term, but it's about 
the long haul of how we're committing ourselves and trusting, not in you or me, but trusting in Jesus who is faithful to us. Because you and I do not have some crystal ball that allows us to see what the future holds. But God in Jesus has made a future that awaits us. A future that forms us and can inform our very life at this moment when we let it. Because you see, God shows us a future A future life that's marked with love and meaning and possibility and peace beyond all death. If we just stick with Jesus, if we get on the plane, if we show up, if we stick with the church. Because you see, this is the place where we begin to practice our faith a faith that relies on promises, on the promises of of God and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. A faith that stands on the assurance of things that are hoped for and the conviction of things that have not been seen. Because you see here, we have a faith that can reconcile the most broken relationships We have a faith that can rebuild the hearts that have been torn and ripped out the most. A faith that can help overcome the physical and mental suffering and pain of people. A faith that allows people to give up addictions and ask for help. A faith that makes people keep showing up to care for children and others that people just leave behind, a faith that asks for forgiveness, a faith that reconciles, a faith that changes lives. And even just a little bit of faith, a mustard seed of faith, a little bit of openness, a little bit of seeking, a little bit of acknowledging God can lead us to a hope and a joy and a strength and a peace and to a future that you and I cannot see just yet, but a future of which we are assured and confident. We don't know how the flight is going to always be. Sometimes there's delays, sometimes there's turbulence and storms, sometimes there's irate passengers, sometimes you get tired, sometimes the food is phenomenal, and sometimes the food is horrible along the journey. But all we have to do is to show up and trust that the pilot will get us to where we need to be. All we have to do is to show up here And trust that Jesus is far greater than you and I. And even if our faith is wavering, lacking, it's non-existent, or all the lights are going off, Jesus' faith never wavers for us. So trust in that faith. Trust in that Jesus. And not in the gnat that keeps flying in my face. (laughs) But trust, hold to that Jesus because there is a future for you and I that's out there. It's been assured and promised to us if we just get on board. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This morning, it's a great joy to welcome new families to our community here, to this faith community. And so I invite you, if you'll join us, if you're in the pews, on, we'll begin on page 33 in the hymnal and, and follow through some of the pieces there as I welcome 
the dancers and the Mahonies to come forward. This morning, it is my joys, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to welcome new faces to our family. That through the sacrament of baptism, we all are initiated into Christ's holy church and incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. And all of this is God's gift offered to us without price. And through the reaffirmation of our, our faith, we renew the covenant that was, renew, that was declared at our baptism by acknowledging what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's church. And so this morning, I present to you Patty Mahoney, who comes from, and I'm going to mess this up, Leesville, United, Leesburg, Leesburg United Methodist Church in Leesburg, Virginia. And Randy and Gina Dancer and their daughter, Jillian, who come to us from First United Methodist Church in Cannonsburg. I was going <laughs> to say Pike because of the street. In Cannonsburg, United, in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. They've been worshiping and joining in our life over the last several months. And today we officially welcome them as members here today. And so on behalf of the whole church, I ask you to re do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. And according to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And do you, as Christ's body, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be a true disciples who walks in the way that leads to life. May you remember your baptism and be thankful. And as a member of this congregation of the United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Now, as members of the household of God, I commend the dancers, Randy and Gina and Jillian and Patty Mahoney, to your loving and to your care, to do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. Together we give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And the God of all grace, who has called us all to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you in his name. Welcome. We are glad to officially have you here. Welcome to you. Welcome to you. Welcome to you. Welcome. They will join me out front under the portico following worship so that you can give them a warm First United Methodist Church welcome. Thank you. 
Our worship continues as our ushers come forward to receive our tithes and offerings. you to join us in the prayer of confession and forgiveness found in your worship folder this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path. We have not chosen our way way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When we have been met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Your sins are forgiven and you are free to love as God loves you. Amen. Together, as a people of faith, let us affirm that faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth right hand to God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. we trust in God's extraordinary love for us. Let us offer our prayers together in the name of for the church, for the world, and for one another. As you're seated, let us pray. O oh, gracious, amazing, empowering God, let your loving kindness be known upon your church here and throughout the world. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit and equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness, O God, be upon this, your world. Be our helper and our shield in places that are torn by strife and violence. We continually pray for the Ukraine and for other places throughout the Mideast and Africa and Asia and around the world that are filled with violence and unrest. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And let your loving kindness be upon all your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve. Embrace those who cry out to you. Especially do we pray for those within this congregation and community who need healing in body and mind and strength to overcome disease and surgery, addiction, and a host of others. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And let your loving kindness be upon this community here. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the ministries of outreach in this congregation and all those for whom are in that we care for. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And it is with thanksgiving and joy, O oh God, that we remember all who have died in faith and who rest now in you. As they placed their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Receive these prayers of your children here and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ. Amen we invite you to join us in the great thanksgiving that's found there as an insert this morning 
in your worship folder. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You showed your people that if they were willing and obedient, their transgressions would not be held against them. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join together in their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He taught that your kingdom might come at any moment, like a thief in the night. So we must be alert at all times. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this all of you for this is the blood of the new covenant that's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. For by faith, marvelous things happen through your grace. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is but one loaf, we who are many are one body. And the bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. In Christ's presence, there is full joy. Will you come and join us at the banquet? In the United Methodist Church, our table is open to all who would like to come and receive. This morning, there will be three stations here at the front. To my right and to my left, as you come forward, you'll be given a wafer to dip into the chalice and then return to your seat. If you come to the middle station, you will receive an individual cup that will be poured out for you and the bread will be given individually to you. Come to the station that you feel most comfortable with. If you do, would like to come but not to receive, if you simply will cross yourself 
when you come forward, the server will know to offer a blessing to you. We do ask that you give us a moment to allow the choir, the servers to come forward so that we may serve them, and then the choir will come down as we prepare to serve the congregation.
Most life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Now may the God of all peace and joy bless and comfort you as you go forth and show you the path of life this day and every day. May you go forth in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit to serve with justice, with kindness, and with mercy. Amen.